Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take a closer look at the future of soybean crushing in North Dakota with two big plants on the horizon. I'm Jeff Beach in the southern Red River Valley where corn planting is finally getting started. We begin our Follow a Farmer series once again where we'll meet a 22-year-old ag engineering graduate who's beginning her career as a full-time farmer. And a well-known group that helps farmers in need is at the mercy of Mother Nature. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. In just a couple of years, North Dakota will go from a state that exports 90% of its soybeans to processing and adding value to more than half its soybean crop. Jeff Beach joins us now with more on this week's Ag Week cover story. The transformation will come with the construction of soybean crushing plants at Spiritwood and Castleton, North Dakota. North Dakota Soybean Processors is building the Castleton plant. It's a partnership between Minnesota Soybean Processors and CGB out of Louisiana. Construction is expected to start this summer. Backers say it will be good for the growers and the state. North Dakota is one of the top 10 soybean producing states in the United States. It is the only one that does not have a dedicated soybean processing facility built in it. So it's a great place to put a plant and the whole idea is to add value to North Dakota produced soybeans. The two plants are being built in counties that are not only North Dakota's top soybean producers, but rank among the nation's top producing counties. Jeremy Weller, the general manager of the Minnesota Soybean Processors plant in Brewster, says more soybean acres are being planted in response to a growing industry. Yield has continued to increase over the years, and uh, we expect that, that same thing to happen in North Dakota, especially with some dedicated crush plants there that uh, there will be plenty of soybeans to go around for all these crushed plants that are being built. Studies show growers can expect a 5 to 10 cent a bushel premium because of the plants. At Spiritwood, ADM is partnering with Marathon Petroleum to convert the former Cargill malt plant into the state's first dedicated soybean processing plant. It's certainly an interesting time for the state. Thanks, Jeff. You can read much more on Jeff's cover story in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Cold, wet weather continues to hamper planting, but there is some progress this week. Corn planting is still way behind in North Dakota, at 4%, but in the past week jumped 20% in South Dakota, 26% in Minnesota, and 43% in Iowa. Nationally, the percent is now 18% behind the five-year average. Nationally, soybean planting crept up over the last week and is now only 9% behind the five-year average, but it's still well behind in the northern Great Plains. Spring wheat is still well off its national average pace of 67%, but South Dakota and Montana are right around or above averages. At 5%, Minnesota is 70% behind its five-year average. Oats are 67% planted nationally, down only 15% from average. At 40%, South Dakota is just 18% behind its five-year average for oats, while Iowa is 20% behind and Minnesota lagging by 30%. USDA has decreased its projections for the U.S. corn crop. In the latest WASD report, USDA lowered the national average yield on corn to 177 bushels per acre. Randy Martinson of Martinson Ag Risk Management says it's early in the season to make that prediction. It's really unusual for them to do that. They normally don't. They, they normally like to see you know us get into the growing season a little bit before they make adjustments on the production side. So this was a huge to see them do that, and it tells us that they're a little bit worried about the planting and that you know where the acres are going to get put. They're not going to get put in the best of condition. So that is significant for the corn market. In addition, USDA lowered feed demand by 275 million bushels and exports by 100 million bushels from this year going into 2022. That may indicate tighter stocks than the USDA wants to see. You can hear all of Rainy Martinson's market wrap at agweek.com. The late start means some growers are skipping wheat this year and going straight to corn and soybeans. Dwayne Gorder farms near Esteline in East Central South Dakota. After a dry year in 2021, Ray delayed planting until May 10th this year. Gorder will plant only corn, soybeans, and alfalfa on his 700 acres. There was wheat in his rotation last year, but there won't be this year. It's gotten to be late this year, and late planted uh, uh, cereal grains is not a good combination usually. Gorder says he's concerned that some people may be rushing to get the crop in, and if there's an early frost or other bad weather, yields will suffer. 
After the violent storms that made their way through the region earlier this spring, livestock producers have had to navigate some challenges due to excessive moisture and an immense amount of mud in their pastures. We've had some challenging weather the last month, as everyone knows. Miranda Meehan is a livestock and environmental stewardship specialist within NDSU Extension. She says the mud leaves many farmers and ranchers with nowhere to put their cattle. There's just not a lot of options for people to get animals out of the mud too, because um, lots are the lots are muddy. Mud harbors pathogens very, very well. Zach Carlson, an NDSU Extension beef cattle specialist, urges ranchers and farmers to be aware of the possible health risks that come along with calves being in a muddy area for a long period of time. Maybe the cow's udder's dirty, covered in mud, which contains manure and some of these pathogens. That calf's going to consume that, then the, that mud, and get that in its mouth and its digestive system, and then now we've got a digestive infection, right? And, and then we'll see it in scours. However, it is important that the cattle are not moved from the muddy lots to the pasture before the grass is grazing ready. If we graze our grasses too early, it can set us back in terms of total production for the grazing year up to 60% or more. Because of that, Meehan advises ranchers use good judgment when putting animals out to graze. She also says some of the region's tame grasses, such as brome, have reached grazing readiness. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we kick off another season of our popular Follow a Farmer series with a young woman just getting started. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. Last year's drought really cut into yields for some growers. Couple that with high and rising fertilizer costs and that can lead to real problems for growers. But there is a solution. Aquiel products save you money because you use much less. If the average price of what you're going to use in the Aquiel products is anywhere from $12 to $15 per acre, you can compare that to standard fertilizers that would be up in that $50 to $60 per acre. Aquiel's efficiency comes through the use of nano-liquid technology. But we've had proof of where farmers can see a bushel increase. Aquiel is unique in that it can be deployed as a delivery vehicle into micro and macronutrients and other crop protection products a grower is already using. It protects them in the patented Aquiel nanoparticle. These tiny particles penetrate root and leaf tissue, improving absorption into the plant. Nanoliquid technology truly lets you use less and yield more. It's fun to sit down with the producers and go through the details of what nanotechnology is all about. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit AdvancedGrainHandling.com. Last year, we followed three farmers from around the region throughout the season. It was so popular, we're doing it again this year. We're kicking it off with a woman who's just starting out. Lily Bergman got her degree in ag engineering this spring from NDSU. But at 22, she's been working on the family farm in Northwest Minnesota for half her life. And she's been farming on her own since she was 17. She grows sugar beets, wheat, pinto beans, and soybeans on 600 acres of rented land. Most years, she would have started planting, but she says their driest ground isn't ready yet and some is still underwater, but she remains optimistic. 
We've had a lot of years where we aren't in the field till the end of May and still come out with a good crop. So we just try to stay hopeful and um, know that things can still turn around. But yeah, we're getting pretty antsy now. <laughs> in the meantime, she's keeping busy getting the equipment ready. She and her dad, who farm together, bought a beet lifter and bean combine last year, so she's excited to try the new equipment later this season. Now we travel from the northern Red River Valley to the southern valley to meet another farmer we'll be following this season. Vance Johnson raises corn, soybeans, wheat, and sugar beets on this fourth generation farm on both sides of the Red River near Breckenridge, Minnesota. When we stopped this week, he had just gotten into the field and was getting started with corn. Johnson says in a normal year, he would have had wheat and beets in by early May, but he hadn't even started those. He calls this season nerve wracking. Actually frustrating is probably the biggest thing. All spring we've been to the point where we need two days to get decent field conditions and one day out it rains on us. So we're, we've been a day out for the last three weeks. Johnson's farm is also the site of a 60 acre test plot. This is the second year. Last summer, Johnson planted corn into what had been a wheat field. This summer, he's following corn with sugar beets. There will be a demonstration day on July 13th. Like many farmers in the region, a local nonprofit is also at the mercy of Mother Nature. Farm Rescue helps farm and ranch families during trying and difficult times, such as a death within the family or an illness. During a normal year, Farm Rescue would be well underway with their planting season. But due to excessive moisture, they've been at a standstill. Our schedule is full for the spring here and, and a lot of planting assistance requests that we've taken on and uh, the window's getting smaller to, to provide that assistance. However, there are some areas within Farm Rescue's territories where planting has finally begun. Uh, we had a planting case down in Kansas and a couple before that in that same state. Uh, and then we've also been working in Iowa and Minnesota this week. So we're definitely keeping busy, but things are gonna be a lot busier when, when conditions are finally right to, to get in the field in some of these wet places. Farm Rescue helps farm and ranch families in seven states. Leaders from the federal agency that regulates the nation's largest provider of ag financing got a first-hand look at Midwest Ag this week. The Farm Credit Administration oversees the farm credit system, which is the main source of ag financing. Leaders of the agency toured Minnesota and Iowa so their employees can learn about projects they finance. FCA Chair and CEO Glenn Smith says he's pleased to see how their young, beginning, and small farmer programs are working as they visited a farm run by the Hmong American Farmers Association. I was very impressed with that. They, they took the advantage of the research, the technology, uh, the financing of the group as a whole, and then made it available to the individual producers. So that's an excellent example of, of how we can help uh, those young entrepreneurs get started. The group also visited some other small farms, a rural health care facility, and Farm America, the Minnesota Agricultural Interpretive Center. It's exciting to have them in our space because a lot of them have not been to Farm America before, and a lot of them have not, from my understanding, been on farms before. So it's, it's a neat opportunity for them to, to get a new exposure to what's happening in the countryside. The group made seven stops in Minnesota and Iowa. Ahead on Ag Week TV, late planting can lead to excess weed pressure this year for soybean growers. We'll have some advice on preventing it. At Gateway Building Systems, we provide unmatched service to all of our customers. Butler Builder understands this. We combine creative design capabilities with superior workmanship to deliver optimal building solutions. Our team provides insight that takes you from the ground up to build your future. Gateway Building Systems and Butler Buildings are designed for strength, durability, and longevity. We are here to build your project and maintain it for the next generation. Your legacy is not only where you came from, but more importantly, it's where you're headed. With our toolbox of reproductive technologies, exceptional team of professionals, and more than 40 years of experience, we continue to create future leaders. Whether it's advancing superior genetics or empowering the next generation of livestock producers, you can trust Transova to continue your legacy. 
small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation. With a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate, and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. For over 130 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska has been providing protection from the unexpected. Farmers and ranchers choose Farmers Mutual insurance coverage for their industry experience, prompt claim service, and unmatched financial strength. Experience an insurance plan that's customized for your operation. Visit fmne.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. As the region inches towards spring, the weather was a mixed bag this week. Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. The heavy rain the last month and a half across the northern plains is not only having an impact by totally getting North Dakota in particular soaking wet, we've got some other issues. This may actually impact the summer weather pattern. Warmer weather is building back in, can't build in over the cold weather, over the cold wet ground. Now the first heat wave of summer has been building in this past week, extremely hot temperatures down in Texas, New Mexico, a little early in the season for temperatures to read like 105, 106 degrees. So the heat is down there, down south. Will it come up north? The long-range indication has been with the second year, second summer of at least a moderately strong El Nino, that the northern plains will be in a prime position for a hot, dry summer, maybe a second one in a row. But over the last 60 days, heavy precipitation on the order of 250 to 400 percent of normal. In other words, between two and a half to four times the average precipitation. Most of this in the last six weeks, and it's really focused on North Dakota. A little bit of wet weather down here in the Mid-South, centered on Arkansas. Of course, it basically has not rained at all over the southwest from West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and the far southwest. Pacific Northwest has had some rain. The east kind of nominally uh, normal, but up here in the northern plains, it has just been soaking to ridiculously, in fact, record wet across the region this spring. Well, with all this water in the soil, it's going to be a little tough to start getting the uh, heat to build in, and it certainly is going to be a tough for it to be dry. Even if we get a hot weather pattern, now with all the soil moisture, I suspect thunderstorms will win out. So it may end up being ultimately a warm and rainy summer, at least starting out the summer in the northern plains. Let's look at the short range pattern. This weekend, we've got a little bit of a southwest to northeast flow, uh, drier, cooler weather settling in, not cold as some of the weathers has been recently. And in fact, we will see some warmer temperatures build up this week. The general waviness of the pattern, bright, likely keeping the really cold weather as the week goes along up north. And this is not going to be hot weather. Some of these days will just be near 70 degrees or maybe get up into the low to mid 70s in spots. Over the second week of the period, we will continue to see the weather be fairly mild as relatively weak systems pass through. I don't see as much wet weather in the forecast the next two weeks as we've had the last six. Scattered showers and thunderstorms from the Mid-South up into the northeastern states, the southwest dry, and just a kind of little token showers and stray thunder showers this week in the northern plains and upper Midwest. The second week, we might start getting into some wet weather again. This is about the time as the calendar turns to June. Temperatures will likely be warming up a bit around that time as well, but it doesn't look terribly heavy unless you get a couple of heavy storms. Still, the weather trending a little warmer, tempered by all that moisture. Saline can leave parts of a field unproductive, but now there's a solution. An Arizona company is taking technology developed for golf courses and using it to take salts out of the soil. Calcium is kind of the bully of the soil, and so it pushes off the other nutrients off of the uh, soil colloids. It was black. The headlands were black, and nothing was growing. Even weeds had a tough time. 
Then we met up with, with Jim, came with a product called Kelsene. Between the drain tile and Kelsene, you see now that we have vegetation. We have actual corn coming here. Our experience is normally along roadsides, whether it be highway, putting salt on highways and, and that getting up in the fields or satellite imagery, we looked at it, you can see exactly where the calcine was. We have more growth in those areas. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening, so that's encouraging. Contact Erickson Custom Operations for more information. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. It's going to be an interesting year in agriculture. We have already seen the markets trade to new crop highs and levels not seen in years. There is uncertainty around the 2022 growing season. Will drought impact production? How many acres will be switched? And will demand remain strong? Are you getting the information you need to make the right marketing decisions? With the changing market environment, maybe it's time to change how you approach your grain marketing. Let Martinson Ag Risk Management get you the news that matters and a marketing plan that suits your needs. AuctionBlock.com First with online equipment auctions in 1999. First in worldwide registered users. AuctionBlock.com Online farm, construction, and transportation equipment auctions every Wednesday. Sell with the leader. Call AuctionBlock today, 218-483-7880 or visit us online at AuctionBlock.com Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. This year has been tough for growers so far, and it could mean problems throughout the season. As Rose Dunn reports in this month's Soy Insight, we see how planting delays could give weeds the chance to get a foothold. The spring is quite a contrast to last spring. That may be an understatement. Last year's drought has given way to a cool, wet spring that significantly delayed planting around the region. NDSU Cropping Systems Specialist Greg Andrews says this could especially affect the soybean crop, but he urges growers to wait for soil to dry out and warm up. Soybean, again, is a, a crop that will perform very well with, with minimal um, soil disturbance. So we'd encourage people to, to minimize their tillage uh, this spring, plus it'll save some time. But it's hard to be patient. To make matters worse, late planting could give weeds, especially kochia and water hemp, the chance to get a foothold in fields before crops. Those weeds specifically, it, it's very important to not skip applying a pre-emergence herbicide. NDSU uh, Extension Weed Specialist Joe Eichley says this is especially a concern for soybeans. He says growers in a tight planting window may be tempted to skip the pre-emergence herbicides, but he strongly urges growers not to miss that step. If you can, slow the planters down. Just make sure you get uh, within three days after planting the field, try and get a sprayer into that field, get a pre-emergence herbicide application made. Eichley says another tactic is to incorporate herbicides ahead of planting in conventional till systems, but no matter when you do it, it's important to consider wind speed. Crop you can plant in 30, 40 mile per hour winds. We can't be spraying herbicides when it's that windy. Andrew says it's likely the late start will affect yields, but it's too early to predict how much. This year, who knows? We'll do the best we can. We got good soil moisture and eventually we'll have consistent warm days and we'll, we'll hope for the best for having a, a good soybean yield. In Fargo, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. Andrews also says it's a good idea to use a fungicide seed treatment in a year like this with cold, wet fields. Still ahead, a big name in ag will be back at Big Iron this year.
small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation. With a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate, and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with superior grain equipment. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seeding and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Slowly but surely, the agriculture and farm show world is returning to pre-pandemic form. After taking a year off, Titan Machinery will be back at the Big Iron Farm Show this fall in West Fargo. Like many other equipment dealers, Titan opted out of the 2021 Big Iron Show due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of that stuff went on hold because of the pandemic. Uh, so we did step back from uh, Big Iron. Uh, also, our manufacturers had the same problem. They didn't want to send people out to uh, potentially, you know, in a, in a harmful situation. So we stepped back from Big Iron along with Case IH. However, supply chain issues may make it difficult for Titan to have a lot of machinery at Big Iron. As far as equipment, that is really the challenging part. Uh, in a year like this where demand for equipment is, is very high, uh, commodity prices are high. We still have supply chain issues just like everybody else is dealing with. Our competitors have the same problem. Titan Machinery will have Case IH, Case Construction, and New Holland Equipment at their Big Iron booth. Stories you'll only see on AgWeek.com and in AgWeek Magazine this week. As the Minnesota Legislature looks to wrap up soon, the Ag Commissioner says leaders have agreed on an $18.4 million drought relief bill and $15 million for supplemental ag. And a meteorologist and commodity advisor says this year's La Nina is actually stronger than the La Nina events in 1989, 99, 2008, and 2011. We appreciate you watching Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up on all your ag news. Have a great week.